Hello, this is Rob Herstelt uh, with a RackN digital rebar demo uh, training. This is really more of a tutorial because I want to show people how to set up IPMI, uh, which is the, uh, <laughs> the BMC interface for machines. So it allows us to reboot them out of band. This is not a requirement to use digital rebar. The runner has the ability to reboot and reset the machines, and that's the preferred way to do normal uh, reboot operations. Uh, but if you need out-of-band power management, uh, this is the way to set it up, and I'll show you how, how that works and, and everything you need to know. This t video will take a little bit of a while, so it's, it's useful if you've used digital rebar. This is not the thing you want to start with. First, learn how to boot and provision machines and get them, those going, and I'm going to assume you've done that already. Uh, I'll give you a short tour in the process. Um, and in this case, I have a machine that's a simple Dell machine with a out-of-band management controller already set up. I'll show you how that looks. And everything I'm going to show you is in the documentation already. Uh, the IPMI plugin, which is what uses this, has a very exhaustive documentation. Our goal is for you to be self-sufficient with this. Um, we've made some licensing changes that require that allow you to generate a self-service license and play with uh, this and other Rackend extensions to Digital Rebar, uh, completely self-service. And there's a video about that also if you want to see how to build that. And of course, it's in the docs as well. Let me show you what, what we have going right now. I've installed the digital rebar endpoint. It is uh, dual homed in the, in the sense that it is on my internet, my wireless internet at home. So it's my laptop in this case. Uh, in a lab, you might actually have a, a static server. But one side is, is on my, lap, my, my internet with DHCP and has my interfaces. The other side, I have a wired interface, in this case, a USB dongle. And that uh, I've assigned a static IP address to that, uh, which maps to a 10.10.10 subnet. I'll show you how to implement that in Digital Rebar. Uh, and then on that, I have both the Pixie and the, the so my admin network, where I can Pixie boot from, and my out-of-band management network. It is perfectly acceptable to have both. Uh, although in a production environment, you are more likely to separate those two uh, for many, many reasons. Uh, so you would have your DRP endpoint with homing on both sides, so in, and probably two completely different subnet masks. Uh, I want to point that out because right, the lab configuration is probably where you're going to start and play, but you know, that's, that's clearly not the way we want to actually run the systems in production. Uh, and what that would translate into, if you just look at my networking here, uh, this is my Ubuntu desktop. Uh, I have a wired, this is my wired connection. If I look at the settings here, what you'll see is I've assigned a static IP address, um, and it's going to end up being my gateway address. That's all good. Um, and I've identified it and some other things. This is the primary thing that I needed to get done to make this work. And then to actually be able to boot machines from that, uh, I have a couple of things I need to do. These are normal digital rebar things, so I'm not going to dwell on them. But in, I've, I've created a subnet for my system. I uh, just went through the add subnet process. Uh, this, I don't want it. This is my, my, I don't want to be broadcasting on that network. This is my wired interface, 10, 10, 10, 1. And here's my range of um, addresses, 100 to 250, 254. Um, and I have my gateway set, my domain names, and things like that. So normal, normal stuff that you want to get done. And in this case, I still have my virtual box, so I can, I can run both VMs and Physical machines on the exact same endpoint, uh, they're tied to different subnets, um, so that works out just fine. So, uh, and the simple simple thing for me to do is just going to be to boot the machine. So I will, I have the DRAC already set in here. I can turn around and push the button, um, but in this case, I'm just going to power it on this way. So I've already set the credentials in my rehearsal. And we'll be resetting those credentials as part of this training. This is my login. IDRAX are not especially fast. Uh, none of these systems are. But now I'm going to go ahead and turn the machine on. And you can hear in the background fans cranking up as it begins its boot process. Um, and this is physical physical server, so it's going to take some time to configure memory and boot and go through the process. While we're doing that, I'm going to show you that I have done the requisite work. I have my boot environments. 
set up with the ISOs loaded. Uh, I've got uh, a workflow set up for discovery, which is very simple, just discover and sledgehammer wait. So there's no IPMI actions right now. It's just going to do the basic registration uh, when the system comes in. And I do have an IPMI profile. I'm going to delete that, and we'll create that from scratch together. Uh, and I've already installed my, my licenses, so I can, I can work this. So let's check in and see how that machine's doing. Some boot uh, right here, and we're going to keep going through. Uh, what I need to do is I need to make sure I have installed the IPMI plugin. In this case, I have. Uh, I'm using the TIP version, so I have the IPMI commands. If I didn't have that, I can go through the catalog and download it, or I can pull it out of... Um, but it needs to be transferred to the machine to make all this stuff work. That shouldn't be a surprise to you uh, if you're used to digital rebar. Uh, we have a couple other videos on how to uh, download and install plugins, and so it's just a normal part of using and extending digital rebar. Um, what that will do is I have to make sure that my plugin is created. It should be automatically created for me here. And I've already done this in the background, but you will need to do it also. You need to install the IPMI tool. Uh, which for me was app get install IPMI, but it depends on your operating system and your choice if you're using CentOS and YUM, but uh, you must install the IPMI tool. That's what's, what the plugin is using behind the scenes. A um, whole bunch of extra logic in here, but at the end of the day, it's talking via IPMI tool to the machines. That's explained in this documentation. Uh, and there has to be a path to, to do that from the endpoint. No surprise with that. Now, if I've my boot process has proceeded enough. I should be able to see. Uh, we do not yet have the machine up, which is fine. So to make this work, what I'm going to need to be able to do is I'm going to create a profile for the IPMI settings. I'm going to call it IPMI. And then I need to do a couple of things. So the first thing I need to do is tell it that I actually do want to have IPMI configurations uh, in this case. So, and there's a whole bunch of choices in here. I'm not going to go through all of them. Please read the documentation. But I want to tell IPMI to configure the user in this case. Now, if I already have the user and I can't change it, then you're going to create IPMI username and IPMI password, and that will enable the system to work without configuring your own settings. Uh, so if, if you're not allowed to change the IPMI, there is a way to handle that, once again, in the documentation. I'm going to go through the more complex case where we're actually setting a username and password for IPMI to register so that the system can use it, because I want to show you what that looks like. So in this case, I'm looking for the uh, username. And all of these parameters come in from the system. Now, you'll notice there's two different choices, IPMI username, that's the actual username that it's going to use, and IPMI configure username, which is what I want which is going to tell it to set the username. And in this case, I'm going to call this demo. And then I'm going to pause for a minute. I'm going to give this a distinctive color. Purple's good. And instead of hashtag, we will give it the graduate student. So you'll say, oh, wait, Rob, you've created a username and, and uh, told it to use that, but you haven't set passwords yet. That's because uh, at this time, the UX doesn't allow us to set passwords. And passwords are stored encrypted in the system, and so I, I have to do that from the CLI. And once I've added a password into the profile, the UX uh, is going to freak out about that. Um, by the way, my iDRAC is uh, happily doing all its stuff right now. So we're about to kick in. It's uh, literally installing Sledgehammer as we speak. Uh, so to make that work, I need to go over to the CLI. If you haven't gotten familiar with the CLI uh, yet, I strongly recommend that you uh, Take some time to educate yourself on the CLI. It's uh, really a very important way to interact with digital rebar. Please do not count on the UX. Uh, the CLI advances actually much more quickly. Uh, let me just go over to my home directory, DRP CLI, uh, profiles, show IPMI, just to show you. This is the uh, profile. And what we want to do here is we want to go in and profiles, and we are going to do a profile set. So I need to set the parameter to a certain value, uh, which is pretty straightforward. So I'm going to set the IPMI, and I want to uh, set the parameter IPMI configure password. Try 
to bring this up a little bit in the screen, to, uh, we're just going to call it DEMO, and I'm just going to repeat it twice, demo, demo. You'll notice when I do that set, a couple things happen. One, the UX automatically updated and said, hey, we have a password, and it's giving me key nonce and payload. Uh, this is the encrypted storage, right? Passwords are not stored in normal settings, and so uh, they're stored encrypted. This is a setting on the parameter. Uh, if I turn around and get that parameter, it'll, you'll see it'll return the same thing. There we go. Uh, if I actually want to see the value, I can say decode here, and it'll show me the value. So by default, you're not going to see encrypted values, but um, the CLI, of course, can decode that information, and it will if we ask it to. So that's what that looks like. Um, so now I've created a profile that has my IPMI configuration. I should have my machine up. There it is. So this is the machine we just put through that process in Sledgehammer Wait. And I want to add my profile. So here's my IPMI profile. But it's not set yet. So I need to do that. I need to do two things. One is I need to go to my workflow. And I need to get my IPMI configure stage. The stage is attached to the, that plugin. So when you add the plugin, you'll get the stage. Uh, and the stage will use the parameters uh, the, that I've defined in the profile, which is exactly what I want to be able to do. And now you have the question. So I, I don't want to reboot. Rebooting slow. It took almost like two minutes, three minutes to um, actually get the machine going. What I'd really like to do is just rerun this stage to set uh, the profiles. And maybe what I should do here is let's log out first. We have our username demo. Uh, and demo, and I'm going to log in, try to log in, shouldn't be able to because we haven't run the uh, username and password. I'm going to come back here, and to rerun this workflow, I'm going to just clear it, and then I'm going to uh, rerun the Discover workflow. So in this case, you'll see it's now picking up the stage IPMI configure. IPMI configure is here. This looks great. Um, now, if I hadn't set the user setter, then it would just not do anything. It would just uh, run this process. It would look for thing, look for the, the system, but uh, not take any additional action. In this case, it's telling me, hey, we've got the user account set, and uh, we're going to want that information. Let's check over here. So in this case, what you'll see, uh, we don't have any, any material uh, information here yet. Running and setting the profiles will go and set the username and password on the machine so that they're available as part of that, that profile. Uh, it's a pretty straightforward thing to do. Of course, I can set them uh, here or in the profile also, uh, and that would be exactly what I'd expect to have happen. Um, so the other thing that you'll notice in this as we're waiting is that um, in this view, I'm going to have these different power configuration options. They're not registered for the machine yet. Once they are for the machine, you'll see them up top. I'm going to show you in the CLI how I can determine what they look like. Um, let me get the name of this machine. There we go. Actually, I'm just going to get its UUID. Oh, I'll get the name so I can show you what that looks like. And so if I want to um, see what actions are available, I can say DRP, CLI, machines actions and just the name of the machine uh, let's see i am clearly not remembering my cli enough machine actions id okay oh so if i'm providing a name i need to tell it that it's a name there we go no actions currently registered on the machine which is not surprising uh, because I haven't been through the full process yet. Let me see where we stand with this. We're still running the IPMI configure. Uh, and you can see there's a whole bunch of user accounts. Uh, it looks like I have um, yeah, set username two to demo. So you, this is one of the challenges with these systems. They, they have a limited number of slots to include accounts. It tells me that, and there are ways to overcome this. Um, well, it looks like it's pretty much done. 
Um, so we're gathering information. It'll actually set the IP address, which we can change. Here's the password and all the other information we have. This looks pretty, pretty darn good. We should be ready uh, to make this go. Uh, so now if I jump back into bulk actions, we are now through sledgehammer wait. I can jump to this machine. You'll now see that I have a whole bunch of commands to power change the machines. And if I come over to the CLI, now I have all of the uh, power operations in here. And I also have my IPMI settings all set from that stage. So to recap, by running the stage and running the IPMI configure option, uh, that stage has created parameters on the machine that allow me to do IPMI operations. You could set this yourself if you have them and aren't allowed to do the configuration. And you can see there's a whole bunch of logic behind the scenes checking to see that we you know, use open user accounts and things like that. And these aren't fast operations because IPMI isn't fast um, on these systems, but they, they do work. They're, they're pretty straightforward for that. Let me go in and, and show the login demo. Do this. So at this point, I now have gotten my credentials set. And I can log into the system and take actions and operations, which is pretty good. And we're going to show something fun. So here, I have a whole bunch of operations like reboot and identify, things like that. I can actually show you how to run that. So I can run an action. Uh, we are going to do a power status, power on, power off, power cycle. Power cycle looks good. Oops, getting sloppy, sorry. Power cycle. And so in this case, uh, you'll see behind me that the machine is, is actually rebooting. Uh, I can definitely see it on the physical monitor, but that caused the machine to do a reboot. Um, and you can hear it cranking through its power cycle. Um, and that's how you actually use a, a action, a plug-in action. Um, just like what the API is doing, this is the CLI version of it. I could turn things on and off the same way. Um, and of course, I could do it using my these buttons. That's exactly what the buttons here are going to do. They're going to send a command to the API to make that same run action command. Um, if, you'll, if you look carefully at the way these things are structured, uh, these actions require you to have an IPMI password, IPM username. Um, and so they're actually, these actions pick them up automatically from your parameters on the machine. Uh, part of the design of Digital Rebar that makes all this stuff go. And at that, boy, in about 10 minutes, I've managed to walk through the process of setting up IPMI uh, for machines. Um, the addressing is, is all pretty much automatic from that perspective. There's tons and tons of configuration and parameters and uh, items like that. So please don't be shy about reviewing what we've put together in the documentation um, and adding to it. This is... Uh, you know, we, we want to hear if you're having, having troubles, and we want to, want to hear what, what's going on with this, um, and if you're having any issues. Uh, there's my machine rebooting and going, going through that process. And that should complete it. Uh, once again, this is Rob Hirschfeld with RackN. Uh, please reach out to us. We'd, we'd love to hear what your experiences are. Um, we're trying to make uh, this and other plugins as self-service as possible, and, and we're always looking for feedback on how to make that process smoother and easier and clearer to you.